I want to dig into what the, the, the different parties are promising um, because it's kind of su was surprising to me to say, see this them make these commitments. And I'll start with the Conservatives because I think they were the first one to make this an election issue. Uh, and they've made a big splash with some of their announcements. And I think that Aaron O'Toole was campaigning with his dog for one of the days. Um, what were some of the commitments that the Conservative Party uh, made related to animal welfare? Well, I think the biggest one that grabbed headlines was a commitment to crack down on puppy mills, which as we just discussed are uh, pretty terrible operations where people mass breed and produce puppies because puppies can uh, hatch a, uh, fetch a handsome price on the retail market, uh, especially with the pandemic and more people having time to be at home and raise a puppy uh, has resulted in a puppy shortage and animals both being imported from outside the country from poor conditions and bred locally in poor conditions as well. So but he, I, I want to ask you about that. So like, what exactly is a puppy mill? And what are when they say ban or crack down, what does that look like? What are they proposing to do? Well, that's a good question, because the platform that the Conservatives released is still a little sparse on the details. So the headline says ban puppy mills. But when you look at the details, they say that they'll prevent uh, unethical breeders from marketing themselves as rescues or smaller breeders. So it's not actually clear to me that they do plan to regulate and license dog breeders, which I think is a really essential way of cracking down on puppy mills. Uh, right now, we don't even know who's breeding dogs in most parts of this country because there's no requirement to get a license or register or anything like that. So officials can't even go inspect breeders to see how the conditions are. And I think that's a really important part of what we need to see to crack down on this problem. So one of the other things that the Conservatives talked about was a promise to end cosmetic testing on animals. So what is that going to look like? And, and is animal testing required now for products? It's not currently required for cosmetics, although some companies still engage in it. And um, what has been proposed in previous legislate or previous parliamentary sessions was a bill that would outlaw cosmetic testing locally in Canada, but also make it so that companies can't rely on cosmetic testing data that's done maybe in some other country and can't import uh, cosmetics that were tested on animals abroad. So pretty comprehensive stuff. And uh, unfortunately, there was a bill proposed uh, by the Conservatives that actually didn't pass through the last parliament in 2019 before the 2019 election. And then I think everyone got distracted with the pandemic and so it didn't get revived. So it's good to see that commitment. So there's also a, a promise in the Conservative platform. Uh, they say to get tough on abusers who hurt their spouse by abusing their spouse's pet. And they also want to make it easier for women who leave abusive homes um, to bring their pet with them. They don't want to leave the pet in an abusive home. Uh, and there is a link between animal abuse and domestic abuse. Can, so can you talk about that a little bit and about what the Conservative promise is? Yeah, so I think it's well established that, you know, violence against humans and violence against animals, there is a connection there. And for the same reasons that, um, you know, humans might be struggling and have criminal justice problems such as poverty or mental health, health issues, those same factors might lead um, animals to end up in a poor situation um, as, as humans might as well. So um, there have been concerns raised for a long time around issues where women have tried to leave relationships and it tends to be women and can't find a space in the shelter that can also accommodate their cat or their dog or maybe other animals that they have. So I think that's a useful commitment to see. But realistically, this is this is less of a, a federal issue, isn't it? Isn't this sort of a, a provincial issue? And it's also a funding issue for um, these women's shelters to, to have them actually have the ability to take animals as well as as people who who need a lot of need a lot of help. So are they proposing having having the federal government regulate this or are they proposing giving provinces funding to fund this? What exactly is going on? My guess based on what you mentioned the federal provincial jurisdiction issue, um, you know, it, it, this isn't an issue, an issue where we need a new law to address a problem. It really is a capacity issue with shelters as you point out. So I'm guessing what they intend to do is simply provide funding options to more shelters so that they can build more space and accommodate animals in addition to humans. Well, it would certainly be a, a great thing, I think, to see. And I, I don't think there's anyone out there who could be opposed to a policy like that. When we come back from this commercial break, I want to talk about what the other parties are, are promising because there was some response, right? The, the Conservatives put this out. They got a really great response. The Liberals have now added it, or they seem to have added it to their platform. Uh, and now the NDP is talking about it as well. Mm -hmm. 